Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Phantasmagoria. Last we left off, we finished out the horrible Chapter 5. Thank goodness, that's just... Ugh, that whole thing. But anyway, we move into Chapter 6, and you know, I think that Adrian's probably gonna need a drink after a night like that. Yeah, the puppet was staring into her soul, too. Yeah. So, anyway, continuing... Hopefully into... We did shot for quite a bit before we actually started the chapter here originally. Um, but yeah, there's there's obviously something wrong with the house. Ah, chapter 6. Saturday, October 22nd, 9.20 a.m. And once again, Adrian is brushing her hair. Yeah, well, what else is she gonna do? Well, that and pushing buttons. Leave. And magically leaning on the right brick. Oh, and we get to see her apply her makeup for the day, too. Why is this the start of the chapter? This is not important. This is not essential to see. It is to Adrian. And, of course, she has to announce the time. 9.20. Stop fidgeting and go. Okay. She actually listened to me. That's a change. And she comes down to... Oh, Don. You look a little ragged there, buddy. <sighs> Don? Probably hung over, too. Well, yeah. Adrian. You alright, honey? No. I just hit the whiskey a little too hard last night. That's all. You know, he seems kind of normal. Yeah. Don, let's leave. Please. We've got to get out of here. Look what this, this place is doing to you. Leave. Leave. This is our home. Oh. We can never leave this place. Okay, normal's over. Yeah. Oh my god. What? What's that? It's... A cat collar. Why? Where Don was. Oh, that... what do you want? Hi. Yeah, um... I don't care about the damn phone. I'll get out of here as soon as I can. Try it fine. Get in here and fix it. And then you leave. That's probably the plan, Don. I don't think he wants to stick around any longer than necessary in this house. Look at him shaking his head. I'd be shaking my head, too. Look at that fire. It's such a realistic fire. <sighs> Son of a bitch. So, so it wasn't Cyrus after all. Apparently it was Don who was responsible. And you know what they say about those who start with small animals. Huh. Anyway... I think after that, it's definitely time for Adrian to enjoy a drink. And uh, none of those stuff in the bar is going to work for her. It's a little too strong. But she does like the wine downstairs. Yeah, let's go have a little sip of that. A sip? Out. Nothing. Get drunk on it. Well, I would say that would hamper her judgment, but then I remembered who I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyway. So we get down here and... Uh, uh-oh. One of the kegs is uh, shimmery. Eh, it just means the game thinks she needs a drink, too. Yeah. Even the ghosts in this place are like, you know what, after the night you had, have a drink. So let's take a look. Uh-oh. FMV mode. The game doesn't think she needs a drink? Um. I mean, it's good. You said so yourself. Oh my god. <laughs> That's right, honey. And you drank from it. And she actually runs right out of the basement, too. So just in case that wasn't obvious, and it wasn't obvious to me when I first played this game either, 
Uh, you can watch as uh, Victoria's head bobs up. You can go back and watch that. Remember that device that we checked in the basement? The one that Adrian was fascinated with but near where the uh, hammer was? The grape crusher? Yeah. That is where Victoria ended up after Carno killed her. That keg is the result. That is why there is a question mark next to her name in terms of her death. They As for the rest, we will let you put the we will let you put the pieces together. And remember, Adrian enjoyed it. Apparently, Victoria is fucking delicious. Well, I guess after being turned off of the wine, you know, maybe she she still needs to get something to drink. We let's let's go over to the bar and see what's over there. Maybe the whiskey's strong enough. Just need something, cause this has been a just. Shit night. Maybe there's some Everclear in there or something. <laughs> and, oh, the absinthe bottle is gone? You had to lean down to notice it. You already had your hand out for it, even. What have we said about you needing glasses? Apparently you do. Well, that puts her off of drinking, obviously. Well... I wonder who could have grabbed that. Must have been Spaz. Well, no, it couldn't have been Spaz, because you know, he kind of passed on last night. Cyrus, maybe? Maybe it was, uh... Well, Harriet might... Well, <coughs> anyway. No, Mike grabbed it. He's hiding it in his toolbox. I think it's time for a fortune. Whoa. Yikes. There is something wrong here. That's putting him oddly. What, what, no evil laugh after that music? Your fortune, you are evil screwed. Find your salvation? Well, it's basically the same gist of what you were just saying. Yeah. Evil is here, you're screwed. <laughs> And salvation would be a forty-four magnum with cru with uh, crucifixes etched on the bullets. Or at the very least, a truck-driving phone technician. Speaking of which, we have one over here. Adrian, go talk to him. His truck still has a passenger seat. Uh-huh. Hey, Mike. Oh, hi. I'm just finishing up this job. I'll get out of here as soon as I can. Mike, I fully I believe that's a plan. For Don, he just... He hasn't been himself lately. Not after he hit his head. Hard. Well, you don't have to say nothing. I just don't want to get tangled up in family quarrels, that's all. <laughs> I know. I understand. You understand? No, Adrian! No. You better get back to work. Get him involved! In fact... Just go with him. When he leaves, when he finishes up the phone, go with him. Ugh. She'll never take that hint. She listens to you other times. Why does she ignore you every time you mention that? Well, because that's a common sense one. Well, so is getting out of the basement after having a vision of a dead woman floating in a cask. Ah. This is a shimmery gilded mirror. Let's see. What happens when I click on it? She, oh, this is a little different. What the? One, two, Carno's coming for you. Three, four, go out the door. Five, six, grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, go drive out the gate. Nine, ten, never right. write again. again. Oh, hey. Adultery. Wasn't that more Jason's thing to be all up against? Hey. Nah, Freddy got his share of, you know, a few minutes, duh. Don't be long, Angel. Angel. See, she calls him Angel. That's twice now she's called him Angel. 
There's something wrong with that pocket watch. So he makes her wait so he can read a book. Hi. Oh, uh. And how, how did he not hear the thing open? <laughs> Especially right next to you like that. Okay, obviously that's where Carno got the pocket watch. Delayed reaction there, much, Adrian? Well, that was sufficiently creepy. The game really needed a good evil laugh right there. Yeah. Well, he did kind of grin, like, Yeah, I did that. I was doing your dreams. Oh. Angel. Three. Where are you? Gaston? Gaston? Did you go off to read a book again? Ah, uh, well, that was fun. This is and actually somewhat informative. Yeah. Well, this 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 is actually a creepy part of the game. Where was this earlier, when we were you know driving around town and talking with Luann for hours upon hours? Well, oh, Adrian ran out of things to sit on to drag the game out. Here's a box we can poke again. Mm -hmm. oh, wait the a ring. second. It's gone. The, the ring is gone? Who could have taken it? Spaz, obviously. Oh, Cyrus. And just for good measure, Harriet. And because, again, again I am click-happy here, let's check the cigarette case! Because clearly it will have changed between the last time I clicked on it and now. Well, it changed once. Yeah, and only once. And I seem to refuse to admit to that fact. It's like, no! This must change! Anyway, so let's continue exploring through the house again, because that's something you have to do every chapter. There seems to be some odd noises coming from Dawn's dark room. But let's inspect. We can inspect the uh, electric chair again. Ooh, shocked yourself. Actually, she didn't this time. Oh, she's learning. She's actually, well, she's actually shocked and appalled this time. But I, no pun was actually intended there. But it's no fun when she learns things that keep her from hurting herself for our amusement. Yeah, and wonderful Skype is glipping, glitching on us. Glipping? Anyway. And now we can't even interact with the electric chair. She can't shock herself anymore. Aww. What? Do you hear that? What, what is that? What is David doing in there? Avoiding you. No, I mean, he's not. That sounded like gears spinning. What is he doing in there? That really is kind of alarming. I do like seeing how things sort of fall apart after this point in the game, but we are out of time. So we'll see you in the next installment of Let's Play Phantasmagoria. Hope to see you then. Take care, everyone.
go to hell.